Judiciary and Criminal Justice Joint Committee is unable to recommend or support this particular CACR for fiscal, legal, and policy reasons. I need to respond to the claim that CACR 22 is some sort of New Hampshire homegrown product of our flinty soil marinating for 25 or 30 years to be born in the exact same language as other proposed constitutional amendments coming out of California and introduced around the country. Not true. Remember the immortal words said by the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. The man behind CACR 22's curtain, who rarely gets mentioned, is the gentleman from California. Perhaps this gentleman should have stepped out from behind the curtain, studied our highly effective and well-regarded victims' rights statute, talked to Grand State victims, and peddled his constitutional amendment elsewhere. What he would have found out had he stepped out from behind the curtain is that victims here are satisfied by and large with the services they are provided. Though with 12,000 receiving services, some isolated mistakes may occur. 95 to 99 percent satisfaction rate from victims in terms of services according to a Department of Corrections study. He would see lots of money in the millions, being, if not tens of millions, being spent on victims' rights and services. We are improving those services. An automated notification process is on the way. He would see that we have a strong victims' rights statute, and it is mandatory, and it is enforceable. He would see that our victims' rights statute has more rights for victims than CACR 22. I want to repeat that. Our victims' rights statute has more rights for victims than CACR 22. He would see that we have amended and improved the victims' rights statute five times. He would know that when a victim's family came to the legislature saying we needed a legislative fix, and with a fix in hand, the legislature listened and enacted it. The family said they were happy with what was done. What the gentleman from California would have found if he had stepped out from behind his curtain and looked at CACR 22 is an ambiguous, poorly drafted, and in some parts contradictory constitutional amendment which neither reflects the New Hampshire way of amending our Constitution, nor reflects the laws and institutions of our state. He would see that CACR 22 reduces the rights of victims, including their privacy, reduces the ability of defendants and police officers to investigate and prepare their cases, and interferes with First Amendment rights of you, the press, and me. He would see, but probably not care, that this is an unfunded mandate. It's a walking violation of Article 28A and a downshifting of costs to our county budgets. I will limit myself to one example. CACR 22 would put in the Constitution a right to full and timely restitution. Sounds good. Who could possibly object? But think about it for a moment. The state is the guarantor of constitutional rights. So if the defendant cannot pay part or all of order restitution in a timely manner, the taxpayers likely will. Timely, leaving aside the problem of definition, what happens to the current system when a defendant pays $10 a week or $10 a month, sometimes for years, to get the restitution paid? That would end. That wouldn't be timely by any stretch of the imagination. Much more problematic is by putting the right of restitution in the Constitution, it becomes the top of the list of money that is to be collected from a defendant. Sounds good if you're a victim. Not so good if you're a child awaiting child support. Our statutes say that child support is the first priority of money garnished from a defendant. 
based on federal law. No one until now has disagreed with that policy. But now the victim is ahead because it's in the Constitution and the statute for child support is not. Nothing like taking a child support money from a child and giving it to services for Walmart. Is that what we're really saying here? I'm not saying these are deliberate policy decisions. They're likely not. Some of them are simply mistakes. There are many mistakes in CACR C -A -C 22. If you put them in a constitution instead of a statute, you cannot correct them. Absent a new constitutional amendment, nor can it be changed if circumstances change. As South Dakota found out, which is now trying to repeal much of their equivalent law by a second constitutional amendment. CACR 22 cannot be saved, or it should be. Should it, be. it will always illustrate why we do not put a statute into a constitution. If there are a way to improve our rights and, of and services to victims, we can amend our statute, as we did in 1993. 2003, 2007, 2009, and 2010. Please support the Joint Committee Majority by voting ITL, by pressing the green button. Thank you. And I ask for a division vote. Well, I ask the, uh, we have a request, roll call. We have a request for a roll call. Is that sufficiently seconded? It is sufficiently seconded. All members will take this.